Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we are decanting our FPJ, the Blackberry FPJ that we made a week ago. And I wanted to kind of walk through this part of the process because I didn't think we've, we've talked about it enough. It's like, A, how do you know when this stuff is done? I mean, seven days, okay, it's kind of a magical number, but does it really mean it's finished? And there are certain indicators in an FPJ that you can see, particularly if you're doing this in a clear, um, uh, container like glass container you can see uh, some of the activity going on and the main thing that that when we're doing an FPJ is what we are doing is we're using the sugar that we coated the material with for osmotic extraction but in addition to that there is a fermentation going on because on the surface of the um, cuttings that we took that we used uh, the blackberry tips there's all kinds of uh, bacteria, lactobacillus, and all kinds of uh, yeasts and things of that nature that will actually be working to help extract um, materials in addition to uh, the osmotic pressure pulling the moisture and stuff out. These, these um, organisms are, are actually fermenting. That's why this is somewhat of a fermentation because they're actually helping break down the chlorophyll and the other things to release uh, the nutrients and, and the hormones and things that were in the plant into the sugar solution. So it's not just purely osmotic extraction. So that begs the question is, well, how do you know when it's done? And you can actually go too far. If you leave an FPJ just in this state, uh, continually working on it, um, the bacteria and things like that, they'll continue to work on stuff and they'll actually start forming alcohols and things of that nature. And what you wanna do is you wanna get it kind of in a sweet spot. And that usually, you know, when you're talking about temperatures like around room temperature, 68 to 75 degrees, you're talking about five to seven days usually is about the maximum. And the tip that you can tell that you've got a good batch of FPJ and it is done is you look for these micro bubbles that are actually in uh, the solution itself. These are indicators that there's carbon dioxide being formed, there's actual um, stuff going on in here that there's a fermentation that's uh, reached a pretty uh, good level. The second thing you wanna look for is you wanna look for that the actual volume of the cuttings and things that you used in the FBJ have really decreased and there's actually uh, beginning to form at the bottom of your container uh, a layer that you would say doesn't have uh, material in it, but it's like a sugar solution. So what's going to happen is, is the remains of, of the plant material are going to begin to decrease and they'll begin to float towards the top and the sugar solution will actually go down towards the bottom. So when you start to see those two things, you know you've pretty much um, got a finished fermentation. So the last two steps that we're going to do here is we're going to um, remove the liquid from the remaining solids and then once we have that in our containers we're then going to super saturate uh, and we did a video on how to do that. That'll stop the process of any more fermentation going forward because if you just leave this in a container once you finish with it you have a good shot, um, particularly if it's um, not being able to be stored in a refrigerator, of uh, these uh, microorganisms continuing to do their work and they will continue to ferment and they'll foam and they'll do all kinds of things. So what you wanna do is you wanna get it to the point where it's saying, okay, it's gone far enough. There's lots of good stuff in here. We don't want it to degrade. So we're gonna decant it and then we're gonna super saturate it. So first step is actually getting it decanted. What we use, there's multiple different ways you could do this, but what we use is we use a paint strainer, which is a pretty fine mesh, and it allows the liquid to fall through. Um, this is a little bit of a, a time consuming process because you're going to put the material in it. You're going to put, first you're going to do is decant off all the liquid you can, and then you're going to put the plant material, you know, in the mesh bag and let it drain just a little bit longer and try to you know, get it the additional things you can extract it out of it. Um, and then at that point, the remaining plant material is you can either 
You, if you got chickens, you can feed it to your chickens. Some people make vinegar out of it. You could do that or just put it to your regular compost pile. Then the last step again is after we have the solution, then we'll super saturate it. So let's start with a decant. Now we left a, um, we put a sugar cap on it and there was no molds or mildews that formed on it. And that was the whole reason for the sugar cap is we wanted to, to make certain that at the very top that the, um, the liquids that were, you know, wouldn't be exposed to oxygen and things of that nature. So molds and mildews wouldn't form on the top. If you do have off odors and molds and mildews did form on it, you may have a bad batch in which case um, you may want to discard it. If there are no off odors, but there might be just a little bit of mold on it, you could scrape those materials off and just discard them, get rid of it, and the underlying stuff still may be just fine. In this case, uh, we had 100% no problems whatsoever. So what we're going to do on this is we're just going to kind of pull that sugar cap back a bit and kind of push it to the side so that I can get access to the liquid that's in here. And then I'm going to decant, I'm going to pour that liquid out. And you can see the strong bubbles that have formed. These are all the bubbles that were trapped inside of it. So the fermentation went really well. And the odor is great. It smells kind of like a little bit of like a green blackberry. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this extra liquid into here. If I can do this without causing a problem, I may mean, just have to uh, have three hands. This is not the best container in the world for this, but I'm trying to capture all the free liquid first. Looks like syrup. Yeah, it is in the sense it's kind of a form of syrup. It's thicker than I thought. Now we figured when we started this process that we'd probably end up with ultimately in the end about uh, two thirds of a quart. Okay, I got most of the free liquid out. Now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start just scooping the remains. It's kind of like jam, right? It, you got a certain amount that's you know, juicy if, and then you got to drain the solid. Yeah, so like if you, you know, like if you didn't have a paint strainer bag, you know, a jelly bag would probably do the same thing. As somebody, you know, who, who um, makes jam, jams and jellies to make jelly, you typically have a kind of a mesh bag that you try to drain the juices out. Now this is probably going to be a multiple step process, so. Let's see if I can pour a little more of this in here. It kind of has a bad lip to pour over. Yeah, it's not the best container in the world. It's all we got. Well, yeah, I should probably get a better one. <laughs> should buy a nice glass one. And typically, what I'm going to be doing here is probably letting this stuff drain for 15, 20 minutes. Then I'll squeeze the bag to try to see what I can get out of it. Looks like a spinach. Not too much. There, okay. So this is all just going to be solids, and we'll just let that squeeze out. You can already see I've got. I'm pushing on a half a quart already, but you can see the foamy bubbles. Um, that's an indicator there's still, there's a lot of biology in here. So it's gonna be real important that we, we do super saturate this thing for keeping it stable. 
is once it's super saturated, this stuff, in particular if you put it in a fridge, um, you can keep this stored for, you know, six months or a year or so. And the one thing about this FPJ though, is the, the material that is stored longer, you know, when you're talking about several months uh, to a year, it's still usable, but it's also, it's had a time to age and maybe uh, I think you need to lower your concentration when you use it. So one of the things you, you, you want to do is if you're using an older FPJ, instead of using it at a, at a um, one to 500 level dilution, uh, you would use it at a one to 800. So you kind of, or, or even, you know, maybe one to 1000, but definitely you, you'd go to like one to 800. Okay, the extract went pretty well. We actually got a lot more juice out of it than I thought. Um, it looks to me, I put it in two containers because I need headroom to do the super saturation. We did a video on that. I'll put a link up there anywhere on how to super saturate a solution. Uh, but that's why we left a little extra headspace. And then once it's super saturated, we'll combine it into one container. Um, I think, you know, basically when I finish super saturating it, we're going to have about, um, it's, it's going to be pretty close. It looks like it's going to quart and a quarter. So I was thinking maybe I would get two thirds of a quart out of it when it was done, but, uh, it just, uh, once it put it into that funnel, it just kept draining and draining. So it did, did pretty well. So the last step is we're going to super saturate it and, uh, won't bore you too much with that one, but uh, we'll show you some snapshots of that process and and the final uh, what the final looks like and then we're going to go outside and we're going to I'll show you how we use the FPJ in conjunction with uh, some apple cider vinegar or brown rice vinegar if you've got that and our oriental herbal nutrient we're going to be doing a uh, a maintenance spray on our crab apple tree our crab apple tree uh, last year was almost killed by uh, was totally almost defoliated by rust. And so what we're trying to do is uh, a combination of using uh, Janam microorganism solutions as soil treatment over the last um, year, uh, since last summer. And uh, it's looking pretty good, but I wanna use this maintenance solution and the Korean natural farming um, to give a foliar uh, boost and to kind of prevent it from uh, the rust from getting started. So far we've seen no rust on the new leaves at this point, but this is kind of the time of the year uh, when you have cool nights with humidity uh, and uh, rain coming off and on that the rust can actually get a good start. So we're going to be doing uh, that spray and we'll show you how we use it. Okay, we got it all done, super saturated, ready to go, and we were just about gonna go into the next step was talking about dilution ratios and how we match this together with OHN and our vinegar solution, use it to help our uh, crab apple tree, and the weather started to turn bad. So we're gonna split this video into two, and be sure to catch the next episode, which will talk about how we're gonna use the FPJ uh, what kind of dilution ratios and little tricks you can do for, you know, making mixture ahead of time and all kinds of stuff. Plus show you uh, the actual application on the tree itself. And uh, I think that's about it. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, as always, stay safe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.